Thanks to Biden, this is what stagflation looks like and it's going to be with us for a while. We're in stagflation now. Normally, we should not have economic stagnation and rampant inflation at the same time, but that's exactly what we've got. U.S. GDP actually declined during the first two quarters of this year and we're being warned that economic activity could slow down a whole lot more in the months ahead. Meanwhile, we're in the midst of a worse inflation crisis since the Jimmy Carter era. The cost of living has become extremely oppressive, and this is particularly true when it comes to food. We just got some new numbers from the Department of Labor on Wednesday, and quite a few of them are absolutely stunning. Fresh and dried vegetables up 15.7% for the month and 40.2% for the year. Grains up 10.7% for the month, 30.4% for the year. Fresh eggs up 16.7% for the month, 97.3% for the year. That's almost 100%. Bakery products up 0.8% for the month and 14% for the year. Pasta up 1.1% for the month, 34.1% for the year. Finfish and shellfish up 2.5% for the month, 2.9% for the year. Processed fruits and vegetables up 2.6% for the month, 16% for the year. Dairy products down 1.6% for the month, up 18.2% for the year. Soft drinks up 1.9% for the month, up 15.8% for the year. Pork up 5.8% for the month, down 2% for the year. Fresh fruits and melons down 1.2% for the month, up 20.7% for the year. Turkey up 0.5% for the month and 38.2% for the year. So this is crazy. In my entire lifetime, I have never seen anything like this. And this is by Michael Schneider. Everywhere you look, in the grocery store, prices are rising to levels that are completely nuts. In my entire life, I've never seen anything like this. Everywhere you look the grocery in the grocery store, prices are rising to levels that are nuts. And if you can believe it, even Pepsi has rised, raised prices on their products by an average of 17% over the past year. The 12% increase it expects from full-year organic revenue, noted by Wall Street Journal this morning, comes at the hands of average prices rising an astonishing 17% from the prior year. The price hikes have also helped the company raise its profit outlook. It now expects per share earnings growth of 10% for the year, the report says. So you see that a lot of companies are taking this time, this as an excuse to raise prices, even though they don't have to raise them that much, in order to gain in profits. Now the rise in prices has helped offset a slight decline in overall sales volume, the report says. This means that Pepsi is fighting the recession that the country is in with more inflation. Has the size of your paycheck gone up 17% during the past 12 months? If not, you're losing ground. Sadly, most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck these days, and more of us are ever than uh, more of us than ever are falling behind on our bills. And you can just check the, the results of the brand new Lending Tree study. That's according to the new Lending Tree study, which found that 32% of Americans have paid a bill late over the past six months, and an overwhelming majority, about 61%, said it's because they did not have enough money to cover the costs. Another 40% of the resident, the respondents, said they're struggling more to afford their bills than they were just a year ago. And most said they fell behind in a utility bill, credit card payment, or cable, or internet bill. Life is getting more expensive by the day, and it's shrinking Americans' already tiny financial margin for error down to zero, said Matt Schultz, Lending Tree's chief credit analyst. At the same time that the cost of living is becoming excruciatingly painful, economic activity in the United States is really starting to slow down, and big companies are starting to lay off workers. In fact, we just learned that Walmarts will be laying off almost 1,500 more workers. As Walmart continues making adjustments to the structure of its business plan, the e-commerce-based company has announced it will let go of nearly 1,500 employees by the beginning of December. The employees will all be laid off from one specific fulfillment center in Atlanta, Georgia, 
This may come at a bad time for all employees with the holidays quickly approaching, but the company is doing this to ensure their future. A recent blog post published by Senior Vice President uh, Clarissa Sprague breaks down the shares detailed details of just how they are developing their fulfillment network for the future. Essentially, the senior VP says that Walmart is making necessary adjustments to provide the highest level of customer service that they can, that they can as well as also doing the best by their employees. She goes on to mention that evolution is essential as time change. And Crypto.com has just laid off approximately 40% of their entire workforce. Crypto.com has laid off some 2,000 employees in one of the biggest downsizes in the cryptocurrency industry yet. The cuts account for about 40% of the DeFi exchanges, exchanges staff, according to Coindesk. The current layoffs come after the exchange cut over 400 jobs in the middle of June. Unfortunately, this is just the beginning. Many more layoffs are coming. And just like we witnessed in 2008, the U.S. housing market is really starting to implode. Rapidly rising rates are scaring off buyers and demand for new mortgages is absolutely plummeting. The average interest rate on U.S. home loans has hit its highest level since 2006 as the Federal Reserve's rate hikes to fight inflation continue to raise uh, borrowing costs for home buyers. The rate is uh, set over 7% now. The Fed rate is over 7%. The average rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage hit 6.81% for the week ending October 7. The eighth straight weekly increase the Mortgage Bankers Association MBA said on Wednesday. Higher borrowing costs have sent home sales volumes plunging. The MBA's purchase index, which measures new mortgages to buy a home, dropped 2% from the prior week and 39% from a year ago. This is what stagflation looks like. And thanks to a series of colossal errors by our leaders, it's going to be with us for a while. We were warning that an economic day of reckoning would eventually come, and now it is here. If you're searching for someone to thank for this mess, then you can thank President Joe Biden for the free spending Congress critters and the experts, quote unquote, at the Federal Reserve. Most Americans trusted them when they told us that they had everything under control. Now we can see that it was all a charade, and the months ahead are looking exceedingly bleak, bleak indeed. This is by Michael Schneider. He says, my name is Michael, and my brand new book entitled Seven Year Apocalypse is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I have written five other books that are available on Amazon, including Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, Get Prepared Now, and Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending digital copies as gifts through Amazon to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these writings into the hands of as many people as possible. I have published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, and the most important news. And the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. And that's what I'm doing here now. And going back to the article, the material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles with others is a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge that you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today. This is by Michael Schneider on the Economic Collapse blog. I'll leave links below for you. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. 
You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.